Step into my circle with the opposite of Urkel When I pull up flying purple, people eaters could not bite me I feel the fate of Herschel And I just leave them on the limb and hand them my business His rappers are walking that I already killed them Skin Blanco, lyrical weapon kicking like a Bronco Head honcho, spherical presence came from the grotto A dead rapper wrap his body in a poncho A crack his melon with a combo like Pronto Saganara So before I die, just look inside this crystal ball And say I'll be remembered for the truth I speak Now get involved So we were all tuned in to the draw, the CONCACAF Champions League and LAFC draws Leon, and there's also part of the bracket where your favorite team's on, I know. So what was your reaction when you saw the LAFC bracket and how challenging or how forgiving it might be? I've been saying now all along that I do believe that LAFC does have a good chance to prove themselves at that level. It's one thing to compete in the MLS and do well like they have done in the past two years, but now what's next, right? Mm -hmm. where, where, do, where does the team go from that? And I think that was a natural step to take. And I like the matchup against Leon because it's still not one of the high popular teams in Mexico. It's not America, it's not Chivas, not even Tigres or Monterrey. Who? But, yeah, not in the tournament. Uh, when we talk about boxing, styles make fights. And I think this fight is gonna be great because of the style of soccer that these two teams play. This is eye candy because like Mauricio said, I think Leon is one of the teams, I think Nacho Ambriz has to be the coach of the year in the Mexican league in all 2019 calendar year because what he can accomplish, like playing very good football, uh, very stylish, he didn't close up in the Liguilla, but I think what he accomplished with the team is similar with what Bob Bradley did with LAFC. It was one of the most exciting teams to see, and I think it's going to be full-on vertical action, lots of goals, and I think it's the, the most exciting match of the, of the CONCACAF Champions League. Oh, we like goals. Well, it's got to be the most <laughs> oh, yeah. exciting matchup of the CONCACAF Champions League thus far because it's the only matchup that you're going to see a Mexican team face off with a Major League Soccer team, an MLS team. And if you look at both teams, I agree with Rodolfo, they're very similar. Uh, LAFC set a record for points. They had the most points in a calendar year. Leon had the most points in a calendar year in Mexico. LAFC had one of the most exciting players in Major League Soccer in Carlos Vela. For part of the half year, Leon had one of the most exciting players in Angel Mena. He was an MVP uh, candidate early on. He was clearly that season, the regular season MVP. Uh, they have Ramos, who's a goal scorer at Lobos Guapo, mm -hmm. which wasn't a big team. They have Ismael Sosa, who's a good player at Pumas. He's a very good player when he was at Tigres. They still have Mena. They still have Mena. Uh, they've got Meneses. Takeshi. They've got Chapo Montes. Uh, and, yeah, and, and, yeah. and this is who they have at this moment. I think this is the most intriguing thing for both teams is who they can potentially sign down the road for this matchup. MLS teams have struggled. There's no nice way to put it. And LAFC, you would imagine, is going to face those same challenges as MLS teams in the past. So what are the Mexican teams doing that the MLS teams aren't? Whenever a, Me a Mexican team faces an MLS team, they're always going to feel superior, regardless of the matchup, regardless of the team they're facing. And you play for both leagues. You play in both leagues, so you probably know this better than, than, than any of us. But I do believe there's this sense of superiority that Mexican teams always feel whenever they face MLS teams. And I don't know if probably the biggest aspect of Bob Bradley's coaching leading up to this game is going to be, hey, they're not, they're not that better than us. We're probably better than them. He's probably going to say that, yeah. We, have, we are going to have the best player on the field. Leon doesn't have a Carlos Vela, right? So we have the best player on the field. Our run in 2019 in the MLS was... It's historic. Yeah. It was historic, and we can compete with this guy. So the mental aspect, to me, is going to be crucial for this matchup. And I think Bradley and even Carlos Vela are going to play a big, big factor in just letting the rest of the team know that they can compete against a Mexican side like Leon. It's very simple to me. It's, uh, it is a question of quality and depth, and that quality and depth comes from money. You know, why are Mexican teams deeper? Because they have more money they can spend. They don't have these restrictions like a salary cap. And I remember playing this competition uh, against MLS squads when I was in Santos. And there was a very good nine or 10 back then that could compete. But then you go into the bench and when it comes to a run of form 
injury, illness, suspension. Who do you pick? Who do you pick? Where do you go? And that's where it comes. So now there's all these mechanisms to get these teams that are going to compete in Major League Soccer. More money to compete. And listen, by no means is LAFC a humble club I was in how they say, spend. Yeah. They spend. <laughs> so this is a great representation, but there's still limitations exactly because there's limitations in how they can spend. Leon doesn't have those. And if they advance that side of the bracket, it just gets more difficult and more difficult and more difficult. The easier bracket is obviously on the other side where Tigres is at. The other main struggle I think that has happened in the past years was the calendar, the MLS calendar. I mean, they started in, in, in March and Liga MX have starting activity the first weekend of, of January. So that's, that's a lot of competition. I know it can be different, but I think it helps if you're in rhythm, in pace, for, for high competitivity. Yeah, but the reality, is, the reality is, legally these players can get together under one roof and train for set competition because of the CBA. So they're already against the eight ball. So it's very difficult for these players to all of a sudden get in rhythm when they're not even in season. And as a player, that affects you. Of course, of course. I mean, let's, let's be honest. There's a lot of things we don't know about how LAFC's, LAFC's team will look like and how Leon's team will look like. But nobody is handcuffing Leon and saying, hey, no, you no, guys no. can't train together yeah. till this date. The mental part of the game, um, a lot of these major league soccer teams aren't used to playing in those type of atmospheres. It's one thing to go into the friendly confines of, you know, uh, Portland Stadium or Seattle Stadium or Atlanta Stadium where it's packed and there's noise, but they're not hostile. You don't have, excuse the term, you don't have bags of urine being thrown at you. You don't have batteries being thrown at you. There are, there are CONCACAF environments where it's hostile and some players aren't used to it. Some players who have that national team experience, they're used to it when they go play these you know, CONCACAF nations. But a lot of times you go to Mexico and you're an MLS club, you're an American club. It doesn't matter if you're from Canada, you're a USA. And when you get there, it's hostile. And a lot of times, and I experienced it, some of these major league soccer players, they've never been in that environment, so it's daunting. Fair Taking point. this back to your first question, right? I think where players like Carlos Vela, even Diego Rossi at his young age, right? He grew up in Uruguay. Yeah. He know what hostile environment looks he like. He played Libertadores. Yes. Yeah, and, exactly. and, and Bob exactly. Bradley Libertadores. has been all over the place. That's so help. if those players, if that kind of coach, if they are able just to communicate with the rest of the team and let them know, listen guys, this is what we're going to face. Yeah. You can practice for that. You can watch us much film as you want, but nothing gets you prepared for uh, an environment like that, only experience. But those players who have been there before, those coaches who have been there before, they have to be crucial in this part of preparation to let everybody else know, this is what we're gonna face, but we have to be better than it's, that. It's like what happens, uh, sorry, no, 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 when uh, maybe a coach wants to make a professional debut for a player in Liga MX, you, you'd start to think of the atmosphere. If you put them, against El Volcán with yes. the, the full stadium crowd is there. You, you're gonna get, <laughs> you you're, gotta get to that point. You're gonna get Bambi legs. Yeah. Of course, you have to take that <laughs> into consideration and you can't get prepared for that unless you, you face it for, by yourself. Yeah, right. and, and I'll use Tristan Blackman as, as a, an example. It's how quickly can you get a player like that who's finishing his second year, who's never had this kind of international roce is what they say, you know, where he's rubbing the shoulders or shopping in the irons with these type of environments, these type of players. How quickly can the rest of the group, like players like Carlos Vela, players like Diego Rossi, players that have been there, done that, how quickly, Atuesta, even Atuesta. Atuesta, how quickly yeah. can they get him on the same page going forward? I don't feel 100% uh, confident after this discussion, but I'm kind <laughs> of in, I'm in the middle. There's obviously some hurdles that need to be cleared. But you mentioned the hostile environment, and I don't know if this lessens the hostility, but Carlos Vela, at 17 years of age, won the, the, the Youth World Cup and then went off on a European venture. This is his first time playing in Mexico as a professional. That has to be a big draw in Mexico. How does that change the dynamic that, whether it's Leon, Cruz Azul, or America, we don't want to get too far-fetched here or too far along, how does that change it when they're playing not only LFC, but Carlos Vela? It's going to be interesting because Carlos Vela, I think, in Mexico and Mauricio won't let me won't allow me to lie. He has been probably the most talented Mexican player in the last 10 years. And he has this thing that he will not uh, play for the Mexican national team. He didn't show up for the 2014 World Cup. And I was the one criticizing him. I remember criticizing for his decision. 
then I understood why. I understood what happened uh, behind the curtains and whatnot. This is a big question because I, I, I think is. everyone's waiting to see what that reception's going to be. Oh, it's, it's not going to be pretty. No, you don't think so. But not because he's Carlos Vela. He's just he's just the opponent. He's the opponent. He plays. Yeah, he's I, just, well, I actually think it's because he's Carlos Vela. If you think about it, Carlos he's Vela. He's polarizing. Though. Exactly. Yeah. He, he's he's polarizing. an enigma in Mexican soccer. He's, he's this figure like, why don't you love us? Why don't you play for us? It should be a privilege, you know. And then he comes here for the first time, and now you're with the enemy. You're with the Americans? Oh, no, 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 no. You're an MVP over there. Yeah. You wouldn't be an MVP here. It's almost like it's this thing where in Mexican soccer, there are no better fans in the world because they will blindly support you. But once you're on the other side, you're on the other side. He's been so good telling his own story that I don't want to play. It's my decision. Don't, don't ask me He's why. Been consistent. At this point, I think people they are like so that. fed up of the topic, right? Yeah. So if he goes to Mexico and starts just walking in the mall, People are going to stop and take pictures and of say, course, hey, bro, I love you. I get it. You don't need to play for us anymore, but you were great. And let's, let's, let's take a selfie. Good. Good. <laughs> Why do you think MLS may be beating some of these players from South America that would normally sign at Liga? Two main reasons. First of all is the money. Right, there, there are some players making great coin in Mexico, but then there's the other 80%, other 80% that are not making as good money as they would be in Mexico, making here. Yeah, right. and then it's just quality of life, and that's a question, or that's maybe the reason why some players like Carlos Vela, Jonathan dos Santos decided to come and play in the U.S. and not Mexico, and that's another topic that we might spend hours and hours just speaking of why that's important but in Mexico when you make that much money sadly you become a target mm. and sadly your family can live in peace and you got to be taking care of yourself Oribe Peralta said it himself he wanted to move out of Mexico City because his family got threats and he said I don't want to do this anymore so that's why he moved to Guadalajara that's honestly guys that's, that's the reason why Carlos Bell is playing in LA and not playing in Mexico City or Guadalajara. But I've seen, I've seen a lot of people in MLS circles, without mentioning any names, use that, the safety issue, to the benefit of MLS, saying, hey, if you come here, you're not gonna be harassed by the media, you'll be safe, you're out here oh, in guess, the guess what else? You're gonna be paid and paid on you're time. You're gonna get paid. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> on time. In dollars. In that dollars. is very <laughs> real <laughs> happening in this story. If, if, if you take a look, I mean, your original question is why we see more of this happening, because uh, it's a copycat, a copycat well, thing. Is what's it working? Most, is it working for what, MLS? What's, what's the most, uh, what's the most uh, attention-grabbing league, soccer league, in the United States? Soccer league, major league, Liga MX. Major league soccer no. or Liga MX. Liga it's, Liga Liga MX. it's not yes. the Premier League. It's not. Yeah. La, it's not La Liga in Spain. It's not La Bundesliga. It's it's La Liga MX. That's what it is. Liga MX. Easily. So you have these players that have succeeded in this model. All of a sudden, you have these owners, these execs, these. TV guys are like, well, why don't we bring in said players that already have this fan base that people can relate to? Maybe we can attract some of that. And they're also proven players. Uh, so we're going to see a lot more of that happening. I, I would have team. never thought ever that Chivas would come to the MLS looking for a player, star player, not just one player, star player, and spend how much money for Real Antuna? $11 million. $11 million. Let's stay back with Liga MX. I didn't say MX. I love saying Liga, Liga MX. Liga MX. 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 I, I forgot who I'm with. <laughs> All right. So Liga MX and Major League Soccer have made an agreement to have an All-Star game against their respective All-Stars, MLS All-Stars, Liga MX All-Stars. It replaces a uh, situation where you have an incoming European visitor. Do you think this will work? No, Is this course. something? You, do you like it? You I heard love that? It. Everybody loves Real Madrid, loves to see Bayern Munich, loves to see uh, whatever team you want to mention. But there's this spark between Mexico and the US, and you can see it with the national teams. It's, it, it, it's, it's a battle. They love that confrontation. And of course, a lot of Mexican fans are going to have the same thing with Vela. Yep. Should I be supporting Carlos Vela or, or the, the Liga of Mexico? All these other guys. Have but that's a good point. It's like you're building off of that rivalry, rivalry. between the national teams. Do you th it, will it work for the league? Well, let's just conduct a quick experiment. Uh, Mexico versus the U.S. play tomorrow. Who's going to win? Mexico. National team? Yes. 
Yeah, Mexico. Uh, MLS plays against Liga MX tomorrow. Who's going to win? Liga MX. Oh, Liga MLX. My alliance like but it's even more so than saying. Mexico. That's what I'm saying. So what he's you, talking you, about right US there. US is going to win? I don't even know who's playing. Who's going to play this game? <laughs> <laughs> you know? It is, but this is exactly what I'm saying. Immediately when he's talking about that banter, that spark, that confrontation, it's already there itself. The way he said it, yeah. So this is, this is exactly uh, the, the next step. It's now, well, let's pit the leagues against each other. By the it's way. the next step. They, I guess they're going to give out a trophy to the winner, right? You uh, know what the trophy should be called? Hercules Gomez Trophy. Yeah, yeah. yes. You know very few players, people have crossed those all lines. The player played so many seasons in the Mexican <laughs> League and the MLS. Uh, so yeah. I'm trying to think, Claudio Lopez, no, Omar, maybe. No, no, no. Um, <laughs> you wore a lot of shirts. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. I think it's a great idea, and I love this relationship between uh, Liga MLX and MLS. I think they're dating right now. That's that's the analogy that I've been using. <laughs> I think they just started dating. The romantic. Period. At some point. We had uh, uh, Steve Nash mm -hmm. on, on our show, yeah. and he said, to your question, yeah. he said, I do want to see a super both league. leagues, yeah. a Super League. Yeah. I want to see a merger Combined. of the leagues. And I, and I that's think, another issue. I don't, I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think so but, either. But I think this, uh, this relationship, that they're going to date for a while. I hope at some point they, they get engaged, even if they don't get married. Just go leave together, right? Learn to coexist. Because I think it's great for both leagues, for the Mexican League and the MLS, but I do believe both have to also be very aware of their own identity, what their own leagues represent for their countries. But as long as we have the All-Star Game, Campeones Cup, Leagues Cup, and eventually maybe, like, uh, I, I hate uh, Copa MX, and uh, I don't like the Copa MX is like the, uh, here in the US. It's like the US Open, Open Cup. Cup. Correct. Yeah. I think that's the future. I think eventually there's going to be like a big cup with, Mexico, with teams from Liga Mekis and teams from the MLS. So he mentioned a lot of the, the connections between the two, the romance that's going on yes. between. Uh, do you see that progressing? Is it progressing the right way where maybe they can tie the knot one day? I mean, I love the idea of that happening. And even in the, in the presentation, Enrique Bonilla, the Liga MX president, joked around in imperfect Spanish. And he, he just went out of character, went out of uh, diplomacy. And he said, vamos a venir a su casa y les vamos a echar a perder la fiesta. We're going into your house and we're, we're going spoil to spoil the party. No, no, no. He meant it. And I've never seen Enrique Bonilla like that. So That's even he's on I've, it. I've but, only seen him like that with Major League Soccer. There's been in <laughs> Vegas, <laughs> League's Cup announcement in Las Vegas. He told us, anytime Major League Soccer and League MX play, not only do we want to win, we want to wipe the floor with yeah. these guys. And, and, and just like, let's take a look at the past recent uh, experience. America MLS, and Atlanta. Every MLS team, right? Send their B team. They play with Except for Liga Campeones. Campeones. That was well, no, you, Atlanta Campeones. sent the B team in the final against America and ended up beating them. Exactly. 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 Galaxy. exactly. I mean, Mexican teams took it even more seriously Chicago. than MLS yeah. teams. But still, I think the major improvement will be going back to Copa Libertadores and having MLS teams face against the South American teams. I think that should be progress not only for for players for the league itself and obviously they're gonna be okay what's the guys up north doing and i think that should be so, that should be games, priority a and a lot of traveling a lot of traveling the the problem with a lot of that is oftentimes the decisions are made by financial uh merits instead of sporting merits so there are got suits in a, in a in a boardroom saying well how can we monetize this how can the televisions who are we going to go with who's going to get the money and if you can't come to terms we're not going because we don't want to share the pie with you. Yeah, the problem there is CONCACAF. Yeah. Because, because if, if MLS teams and Liga MX teams are going to play for CONMEBOL, yeah. how much money is CONCACAF going to lose because of that? Exactly. They're going to they're, they're gonna never let that happen. There's a lot of stuff that's never going to happen, but uh, it's going to be a fun well, we right? some dream, stuff, right? But some <laughs> stuff is going to happen. And I, 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 we're, we're in the midst of seeing that develop, and it's a pretty exciting time. And it's good to see that Enrique Bonilla sees MLS as a threat. Is that accurate? He's kind of, he's noticing. He's uh, like, no? I don't know. I, well, think he's, I think he's playing the audience. I think he knows what he's He knows exactly he's a big market. Yeah. He needs to get into, they're already Listen, into this market. Listen, shared interest. Yeah. They can each learn from each other. I think they realize how beneficial it is for both of them. One, learning uh, the, the TV model that is Mexican soccer, how that gets, how that gets going. Uh, it's Fuerzas Basicas, it's academies, it's structure. And the other one is everything else off the field. How can we be more professional? How can we make our events events? Because MLS Cup, 
it's an event. Liga MX, yeah, yeah. the final, it's not so much an event, you know. And if they did that with the star power they have, that's that's big money. They started money. doing money the, they, they started doing the media day because of MLS yeah. in the final, yeah. in the Liga MX final. There wasn't a media day, so yeah. everybody's learning from each other and and uh, trying to apply the good stuff. A lot of these things, as I said, won't happen. <laughs> Some things will happen, <laughs> like LAFC winning the Coca-Cola Champions League in 2020. I'll see you guys there. Woo! You can welcome to the party. I'll let you have a good time. I want to see that. Some good dicky lassos. There will be. I that's, know you do. That's my pick. <laughs> you know, that's my pick. And I would love to see them in the Club World Cup. Me too. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> It's a shame that Landon Donovan was no longer playing for Leon. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been amazing. 